Blanche. What a nice timing, right? I got here on time. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here uh, who join uh, us in person or virtually. Welcome, all of you. I hope this uh, service is uh, challenging and refreshing and give you some energy to live another week. And we have some announcement for you today. Today is a La Laity Sunday, so we are celebrating celebrating uh, the ministry of all lay Christian today. So it's the way that, it's the one way we express the deep conviction that all are called to participate in God's mission as a minister and live this calling through the ministry of the church. So thanks to all who contribute your talents, time, and efforts to the ministry of the church. And we, have, we are looking for church opener volunteers needed. So we currently need three or more volunteers to open the church on Sunday morning. So each person turns on light and opens the door according to the easy routine. If you can help, please contact, please contact Gail. Here are, you can find his uh, contact information here. And for All Saints Sunday, it's coming up in two weeks. So during the worship service on Sunday, November 3rd, we will honor those who have passed during the past year. So you will find the form in your bulletin and fill out the loved one that you want to um, remember during that service. And we encourage a donation of $2 for each name is uh, for uh, to help defray the cost of the candles. So please fill out the form and place it and your and your donation in the offering box on the table in the narthex. And all forms are due by Tuesday, November, October 29th. November 29th is too late. Okay, too many announcements. <laughs> Book sale coming in November. Uh, the New Day Circle woman will have a book sale on Sunday, November 10th. All proceeds will go to the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, for hurricane relief in Florida. Judy is here. Are you going to make an announcement here today or later? Okay. And plan ahead to fill Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving baskets. Our UMC will again partner with the community reach of Montgomery, Montgomery County to provide Thanksgiving basket for our neighbors. So sign up sheets to help, help fill a basket will be available in the Nordics along with the flyers describing basket contents. So more information will come as November nears. And Children's Sunday School, 9.15. Please, uh, please know Children's Sunday School starts 9.15 uh, for age three, 3 through 12th grade. And here is a plea for you, or maybe for the parents. We really need um, someone who can walk the hall to watch over our children and teachers for their safety. It's our safety police. Uh, safety protocol that we need uh, someone who we need one floor each Sunday to observe from the whole way to happenings within the classroom. So please, please, there is a volunteer uh, sign up sheet that you can sign up for fl floor. If no one's here, our protocol says we shouldn't have a class. So please, please. Ask yourself, and if you can help, please help us. Thank you. And Baltimore Washington Conference relief efforts for hurricane victims. So following the, devast devast following the devastating impact of hurricanes in Florida, the United Methodists are increasing their disaster rel relief efforts 
So you can help in several ways, including making donation or assembling hygiene kits. If for more information, you can go to BaltimoreWashingtonConference. Actually, UMCMission.org slash YumCore, and then you can find the various ways that you can be a help to hurricane victims. That's all I have for today, and I now turn it over to Gail. Good morning. Please uh, stand as able for the call to worship and join uh, with me in the responsive reading. We gather today as the body of Christ, each of us called to be ministers of God's grace and love. In Christ, there is no distinction. Every believer is chosen, equipped, and sent to do God's work. We come with open hearts, ready to minister to one another and to the world. As ministers of the gospel, let us worship God with joy and gratitude, knowing that each of us is called and empowered to serve. Please remain standing uh, for hymn number 87 in our United Methodist hymnal. Uh, what gift can we bring? You may be seated. Hello, 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 
<laughs> Hello, kids. I have some question for you today. How can people tell that we love Jesus? By praying. Yes. Say good things to God. All right. Any other? No? Yes, telling people about Jesus, right? Then what can we do to make sure we live in a way that makes God happy too in this world? By doing the right things, right? By forgiving, yes. Okay, some people think it's the best way to make God happy is to stay away from everything that might lead us to do wrong things. But is that possible? No, it's not possible. In this world, we are living in this world, and then something bad happened in this world time to time, right? So it's really impossible for us to stay away from like, anything that happens in the world, right? So they live, uh, so, but still we can live in this world and show people that we are Christian. And today's scripture says we are called to be a minister. Everyone in this church are Christian ministers. I'm not the only one minister here. You also, each one of you are called to be a minister. So today I'm going to show some fun thing. We are going to do science here today. Yeah, you like science? Here I have a little vase, right? And water. I'm going to pour water into the jar. And this represents the world. It's a pure and clean because God created the world and God says, it is good, right? Pure and clean. But sin came to the world. So pure world became a little dark like this, right? So how can we live in this world even it even it's not clean and pure? As a Christian, right? Should we be in the world or should not be in the world morning thank you yeah we should be in the world we are living in this world right how can we be in the world but not of the world as a christian minister yeah by setting a part of yourself as a christian so this is this represents christian christian So if we join in the world, look at this. Look at all the bubbles, upside-down bubble. Do they get mixed up with the bad world here? No. No. Oil here. Yes, oil here represents us, Christian, which means we can be in the world, but we don't be of the world. Does that make sense? That's what we are <laughs> called in this world. How we live in this world as a Christian. We live in the world, but we don't be of the world. That's our calling. Yes, I, I put some oil in here. But they don't get really mixed up because oil represents us. Like Jesus shines his life in this world, even though the world was filled up with the bad stuff. Same for us. We can shine the light of Jesus through Jesus, right, in this world, because we are called to be a children of Jesus Christ, children of God, and then we can shine the Jesus light because we are all ministers. Amen? Let us pray. Yes, yeah, she is also called to be a minister. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your work. 
And we bless each one of us here who gather here to praise you, to learn about uh, you, God. And then we learn today about we are called to be a minister. And please help us. I know it's hard, God. Sometimes it's hard to be hard to live as a Christian, but help us to be your children of God and shine your light in this world. And help us to live in this world, but not of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I have a something. Okay. Sure. Okay, you're not going to choose the... Yes, yes. I will plan on meditation. I will follow in his footsteps. I will go. Please stand uh, as you're able for the reading of Psalm 100, found on page 821 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Um, we will sing response two. The choir. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. Make joyful noise and clap our voice. We raise us all we rejoice. You may be seated. No, I'm sorry. We have a scripture reading. Oh. So uh, our New Testament uh, scripture today is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God.
now it's time for me to speak, right? <laughs> this morning I had a too much, too many uh, announcements to make, so, and then I forgot one announcement. So we have prepared, a trustee uh, prepared a place for children, um, for family-friendly space, and few things that uh, to be aware of that place, that place is uh, a calming area. It's not play area. And that's the place for infants and toddler and not for kids. And we ask you, we ask one parent per child, please. And please do not bring your children to the balcony because we really want to be careful with bring your children in the balcony because like if, I don't want to call 911 during the service if they fall from the balcony. So please take your uh, children down to the first floor here and then take your children to the calming area, please, if you need to. And that's all I have for today. Let's go back to the sermon today. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> today is a Laity Sunday. A special day to celebrate all of you, all of you who make our church community so vibrant and strong. And I want to share a show that I enjoyed watching on Netflix. It's a clean sweep, clean sweep. Uh, this show is about uh, former professional Korean baseball players from the team, and they compete against some of the best high school and college teams in Korea. And you might think that these legendary players would struggle against younger talents. But what's truly amazing is how they come together as a team. Even though they are no longer in their prime, each player works hard and embraces their role. And with the guidance of their coach, they win many of their games, even against current professional teams. And this shows and this shows, shows us that success isn't just about individual skill. It's about teamwork and supporting one another. Amen. And winning can be attributed to just one sport, superstar. And now think about your team, uh, the team that you're cheering for. Raven? No? National? I don't know. Raise your hand if you're a team Raven, rooting for Raven. Eh, no? <laughs> what, are, what other team do we have? Pittsburgh? Commanders? Commanders? National? <laughs> Washington, D.C.? Yes, okay. Sorry, I don't know about the teams here around. Think about the team you're cheering for now. Who do you come to your mind as the best player in your team? If your team wins, is it just because of that one standout player? Or did everyone contrib contribute to the victory? If your team loses, is it all on that star player? Or does it show that the whole team needs to improve? The answer is very clear here. It's the entire team, right? Just having one superstar isn't enough to guarantee a win. Imagine if you had a Michael Jordan, one player that I can think of right now for everyone, because everyone knows Michael Jordan, right? But I never seen him playing because I was too young. Okay, imagine if you had a Michael Jordan on your basketball team, but the four other, other four players are inexperienced and struggling. What are the chances of winning against powerhouse teams like Chicago Bulls or the Golden State Warriors? Let's say Michael Jordan is on the our UMC basketball team, and I'm on the team, and Gail on the team, and Sai on the team, and Sue on the team. 
what are the chances for us to win against the Chica uh, Golden Warrior State with the Michael Jordan? Chances are so low, right? Very low, not very high, even with the Michael Jordan. Because basketball game, it's all about teamwork and everyone playing their part to truly succeed. I don't know if you recall the legendary Chicago Bulls from the 1995 uh, to 1996 season. They had an amazing record of 72 wins and just 10 loses. And now while Michael Jordan was a superstar everyone talked about, there was another key player who didn't always get the limelight. Do you know who it is? Dennis Rodman, right? He was like the unsung hero of the team. He was all about doing the dirty work, the tough and greedy plays that often go unnoticed. And he led the league in rebounds, which meant he was grabbing the ball and giving the Bulls more chance to score. And without his hard work and dedication, the team wouldn't have been able to shine as brightly as they did. It shows us that in sport, just like in our church, every role matters. The teamwork is what truly leads us to success. So here, we are all part of God's all-star team. We have new name here, Rockville UMC all-star team. Each one of you is a player, which means every player counts. Amen. We are all called to be minister, not just a pastor, Amen. not just me, not just lay leader, not just, just chair of the committee. The church isn't about the pastor doing everything. That's simply impossible. Amen. It's not just a handful of people running the show. Each one of you has a unique role to play, and every believer is gifted by God in a special way. Amen. I remember in my first two weeks in RUMC, there were raccoons in the building. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to stay in the office by myself if raccoons goes around in the office in the church. Who took care of the raccoons? Was that me? No, it was the trustee. <laughs> I'm so bad at like taking care of those stuff, you know? Do I know about the sound system here? No, there are someone in the special room who's taking care of that, right? It's not just the pastor who's doing everything. It's not just few people doing, uh, running the church. It's all of you. It's all of you because everyone here is a player. So think of yourself as one of the players who can contribute to the team. Amen. You can just sit on the bench forever. You might take a break now and then by sitting on the benches, but you are not called to be a bench warmer in the church. Amen. Everyone has a place. And every contribution is significant. Amen. And Paul beautifully captured this truth in the letter uh, to the church in Corinthians, where he writes, Just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with the Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Amen. Every person in this church, no matter their background or past, no matter how they have been before, or no matter who they are, they have a vital role to play. Amen. Just as a team needs all its player to function, our church needs the unique gifts and talents of each member to flourish. Amen. 
imagine if a part of your body decided, like, decide not to function. Picture your hand thinking, I don't really matter. I'm not as important as the brain. So if your hand stopped working, you'd have a hard time doing every task, right? You will have a hard time eating, right? Maybe you have to use your food or whatever, just mouth. And for me, it will be hard for me to write my sermons, right? Every part of your body, big or small, plays a crucial role in keeping you going, Amen. right? The same applies to our church community here. When any one of us thinks we are not important or doesn't engage, it can affect the entire body of Christ. Amen. Each one of us has a unique role to play. Just like every part of your body is essential for it to function properly. So let's not underestimate our importance. Amen. Every, pers every person contributes to the overall health and growth of our church. Amen. And now you might be asking, then what do we do next if I'm not engaging in church? If I don't play as one of the players in the church, what do we do next? The first step is to discover your position on God's all-star team. Amen. Just like in sports, knowing your strength and weakness is a key to playing your best game. And each one of us has a unique gift that God has given us, and it's important to identify what those gifts are. Amen. However, there are some challenges that we might face in the church. Few important challenges regarding how we use our gifts. First, abuse. Amen. Some people may feel overloaded, overwhelmed with their task, taking on too many responsibility and wearing themselves out. Amen. And they carry too much of the load in our church, which can lead them to burn out. Just like in sports, if one player tries to do everything on the field, the team suffers. We need to ensure that no one is trying to carry the weight alone. Amen. And second challenge is this uses. On the flip side, there are those who aren't using their gifts at all. Amen. You might think you don't have any teeth anything to offer or that your contribution wouldn't matter. But that's not true. That couldn't be further from the truth. Each one of you has something special to bring to our church family, and every little bit helps. Amen. And third challenge is misuse. Finally, we might see people using their gifts in ways that don't quite fit. Think of a player who is in the wrong position on the field. It's vital to find the right place for our talents so that we can thrive. Amen. If you are trying to play a position that doesn't suit your skills, you might not feel fulfilled or effective. Amen. For example, let's say I'm not a good cook. Let me be honest. And that we are having church event. We are having a meal. And I'm the one who cooks in the kitchen. I'm sure you're not going to enjoy your meal. <laughs> because I'm misusing my gift, right? That's not my gift. Same here. Every one of us here has a special gift. Amen. And then it's your choice to use them well, or abuse them, or disuse them, or misuse them. So how do we navigate these challenges? First, take time for self-discovery. Think about what you love doing and what makes you feel fulfilled. Are you a great listener? Do you enjoy helping others? Maybe you have a knack for organizing events or making people feel welcome. For example, consider how a coach 
assesses each player's skill. They don't just throw everyone into one position. They find out who can run fast, who can shoot, and who can support the team. Let's say we are the football team, and each one of us here have a different position. You cannot be quarterback. Like everyone cannot be quarterback, right? Let's say I have to see the position of the football here. <laughs> Wide receiver, tackle, guard, center, quarterback, fullback, right? Each one of you have a different position, right? In a basketball, in a basketball, we have a center, right? We have a center and shoot, shooter, and we had a we had a player who do the defense, right? You can explore your passions and think about how they might fit into our church. Spiritual gifts in 1 Peter chapter 4 and 10, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Amen. And this verse reminds us that our gifts are meant to be shared. Amen. And I encourage each one of you to explore what your spiritual gifts might be and how they can be used to serve the church. And you might say, I'm serving the church in this way, and I think I know my gifts. And I'm serving this church in this way. I don't need to find out my spiritual gifts. No. No. Let's try deeper. Let's try to explore deeper. you might find another gift in you. Amen. So please try to explore your spiritual gifts and train yourself and develop yourself to serve as a servant, serve as a minister in the church. We need to grow in our faith and ability to become skilled players on God's team. Amen. But pastor, you might ask, but pastor, what if we fail? What if we fail? You might be wondering what happens if we don't do as well as we hoped in the task we take on. Well, let me tell you that doesn't matter as much as you think. Amen. Do you guys remember the singer that I shared last Sunday? Whose singing skill was so bad but still served the praise band? Remember that story? Whether you succeed or not, whether you being successful or not, that doesn't matter to God. Amen. But finding the skill is important. But whether you success, whether you, you being successful or not, doesn't matter. Let's remember the parable Jesus shared about a nobleman who went to a distant country to receive a kingdom. Before he left, he called ten of his servants and gave each of them ten pounds. Remember? And instruction to them was to engage in business until his return. And when the nobleman came back, two of the servants had multiplied their pounds. One made ten more, and the second made five. But then there was a third servant who came forward and say, Lord, here is your pound. I wrap it up in a piece of cloth. Remember? This is where the noble man became upset. Not because the third servant failed to make a profit, but because he was unfaithful to the noble man's instruction. He was afraid to take a risk, and he chose to play it safe here. The first two servants received praise not for their success, but for their faithfulness and willingness to take action. 
the nobleman say to the first servant here, Well done, good and faithful servant, because you have been faithful in a very small thing. This nobleman was not praising the first and second servant because they have made more. In the culture of Jesus' time, it was a common for a king to travel to Rome to receive his kingship. So when Jesus described this journey, he was also talking about his own departure after being rose from the dead and eventual return to us. And the question for the servants was not whether they would be successful with the gifts they received from the Lord, but whether they would be willing to take the risk and be faithful. It's not about you making a lot with the gift. It's about you being faithful. Amen. As a players on the RUMC All-Star team, you may face hardship and challenges along the way, Amen. especially when you choose to share your gifts in time and effort. Perhaps you are hesitant to step up and serve because you fear failure. Amen. But here's the truth. What the Lord is looking for is whether you win the championship or reach the highest achievement. It's about being faithful to his word and taking action. Amen. Let me share a personal experience from my first pulpit. It was a tough day. It was tough tough day. I had never preached English before, and I hadn't even taken a preaching class yet. But I was appointed to the church where I had to preach in English. I remember my first sermon. I was too nervous, and I had to stick closely to my manuscript could maintain eye contact with people and was short of breath the entire time. And I'll, I was rushing to the conclusion. And after the first service, I felt so miserable. So I went to McDonald's <laughs> and binged on food to calm my nerves. <laughs> and people later recalled when it was time for me to leave that church, how they thought I might break the pulpit with my shaking hands. <laughs> that was my first sermon experience. In that moment, I was tempted to blame God a bit, wondering, why me, God? Why me? I had always felt confident preaching in Korean, my native language. I don't need a manuscript if I have to preach in Korean. Back in middle and high school years, my teachers frequently asked me to give a presentation whenever we had a visitors. And I could easily speak for three hours without manus manuscript. Can you imagine? Now I have this. Without this, that's impossible for me to preach. Maybe it's possible, but you're not going to hear me well. So I was wondering why. Why was I struggling now giving my sermon in different language? Why God? But what God wanted from me was not giving my sermon perfectly. It was my obedience to his calling and my faithfulness as a servant. Amen. I know I still need, have a lot of room, big room to improve in my preaching. I know that. But I'm still standing on the pulpit and giving you sermon. Why? Because I try to be faithful to the call. Amen. Every Sunday, the choir is perfect. Yes! Yes! But actually not, right? Every day, am I perfect on the pulpit? Today, I can count how many mistakes that I make. 
already. <laughs> every Sunday, every event, do you feel perfect? No, no. You don't have to be perfect. But remember, you are called to be faithful to God's word. Amen. That's what God is calling us to be. Not like, it's good to be successful, but it's up to God. That's on God. That's not on us. But with the gifts that we receive from God, we have to be faithful to God's calling in using that gift in appropriate way. Amen. It's not about being successful. What God truly cares about is whether we are faithful to his calls as his servants. Every step we take in faith, no matter how small, is what matters most on our journey together. So think of yourself as a player, key player. Every player is important. Every player is needed and is, uh, vital in teamwork. In teamwork. If nobody's here, and I'm the only one here on the pulpit, do we need a church? No. If you are here, all of you are here, and then I'm not here, pastor is not here, maybe you can sustain without pastor, right? But maybe, right? We all need each other, right? We all need each other. You feel the presence of God from the, from the sermon that I preach. You feel the presence of God from the choir singing, right? You feel the presence of God from the children, right? You feel the presence of God from the liturgists and acolyte ushers, right? That's why we need each other. That's why God calls us to be a church, and that's why God calls us to be a minister. Leoti, you are also a minister. I'm not the only one in this church who are called to be a minister, who is called to be a minister. Amen. Yes, I have a title that says pastor, but that's it. We are all human, right? Every human is called to be a minister. But roles can be different, right? Amen. So remember, each one of you are the players in the team. And it's our responsibility to use our spiritual gifts and find what is our spiritual gifts are and use them. Do not abuse, do not misuse, do not disuse. Amen. Use them. And don't worry about being fail, Amen. being failure. God does not care about you being fail or not. I may, I can tell you, every day I fail on something. <laughs> it's about being successful. No, it's not about being successful. It's about being faithful to God's call. Amen. I want to wrap up our, uh, the sermon today with the story of the Mother Teresa. A British journalist once asked, Mother Teresa, how she kept going, knowing that she could never meet the needs of all the dying in the streets of Calcutta. And she replied, see, I failed again. And she replied, I'm not called to be successful. I'm called to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Please rise as able for hymn number 2175 in the black hymnal, The Faith We Sing. And our hymn is Together We Serve, hymn number 2175.
may be seated. Please join me in reading the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we come before you as a united body of believers, thankful for the unique gifts you have entrusted to each of us. Help us to discover and embrace these gifts, understanding that they are not for our glory, but for the building of your kingdom. Forgive us for the times we have neglected to use our gifts, allowing fear and doubt to hold us back. Grant us the courage to step forward, knowing that together we form your all-star team, equipped for service. May we support and encourage one another in our ministries, recognizing the value of each person's contributions. Help us to celebrate our diversity as a reflection of your creativity and love. We commit ourselves to being active participants in your mission. It is a sad in ground. It's just the same, we pray. Amen. Let us pray for people. We come before you today with a heavy heart, mindful of the uh, victims in Florida. We lift up to you all those who have been impacted, the family who have lost their homes, individuals who have lost their livelihood, and community that are now facing the daunting task of rebuilding. Lord, we ask for your presence to surround those who are suffering. May they feel your comfort in their pain and your strength in their weakness. Provide them with the shelter, food, and the resource they need in this time of great need. Help them to find hope amid the chaos and despair. And Father, we also pray for people, people who need your healing. We pray for Bill Lumpkin, and we pray for Diana. We pray for people who are in our hearts today. And we pray for Jan Snively for quick healing of her leg as well. And then we pray for Debbie, Duane, Ellis, and Carolee, and Jane, Donna, and Susan, who needs, your, who needs to feel your presence and who needs your support. As we reflect on our own blessing of God, remind us of the call to serve one another and inspire us to lend a helping hand whether through prayer, resources, or direct support, and help us to embody your love in practical ways so that we may be instruments of hope and healing in the lives of those who are suffering. We trust in your unfailing love and mercy, O oh God, and we place our, all our hopes and prayers into your capa capable hands. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, Guard the hearts and minds of those affected, and may they find a peace in knowing that they are not alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We don't pass an offering plate in this church, but we have wooden offering boxes out in the narthex, and please don't go past them not noticing. As we gather today, we are reminded that each of us has a unique role to play in the body of Christ, just as every player on a team contributes to the game. Our offerings support the mission and ministries of our church, enabling us to reach out and share the love of Christ with those in need. Let us give joyfully and generously, knowing that our contributions, no matter their size, are part of a greater purpose. May our gifts be used to further God's kingdom and bring hope to our community. Please place your financial offering in the boxes on the table in the lobby or the narthex, and you may also donate electronically through PayPal. Please remain standing for our final hymn, number 399, in the United Methodist Hymnal, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Let us pray. As we go forth from this place, may the grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ empower you. Remember that you are an essential part of God's all-star team, called to use your unique gifts and talents for his glory. Embrace your role with the joy and courage, knowing that every contribution counts in the body of Christ. And may you find opportunity to serve and support and one another and grow in faith. And may the Holy Spirit guide your steps and giving you the strength to take risk and the wisdom to navigate challenges. Go in peace, knowing that you are loved, valued, and equipped to make a difference in our church and beyond. Amen. Amen.